What's good, YouTube? What's going on? Yo, don't be rude when you come in there. Hit the like button. Hit the subscribe button. You know what time it is. Um, so in this video, I'm going to talk about um, what do you need for, for travel? What, what do I take um, for travel? What are my uh, necessities? And then um, first of all, I'm going to talk about who did I bank with? So as you see on the screen, I bank with Capital One. I got the Capital One um, 360 checking account. I have a Quicksilver and like um, a, a Platinum. So like with the, the checking, when it comes to Capital One, there's no international fees. Um, there are probably going to be some ATM fees um, if you're outside of the country, but they're not going to they're, they're reimburse you for like foreign transaction fees. Um, so like there's no um overdraft fees or anything like that and it's like um so i've traveled to six countries um while i had um uh, checking um a checking account with capital one and credit cards with capital one so i've been to spain i've been to romania i've been to england i've been to turkey i've been to thailand and i've been to colombia um three times all with the uh, the capital one but what i do recommend for international travel with the capital one is um have your email linked to your um to the mobile app to your account not a cell phone number because if they ask you about a questionable transaction and you're out of the country and you don't have like an international plan you're not going to be able to to respond so I never have like my actual cell phone number linked to um, my account. That's one of like my pro tips. So I haven't been to any African countries. Uh, I know Austin Holloman was having some issues with Bank of America um, in Kenya. Um, and then like when he was in Asia and the Philippines and stuff like that. So um, I, I doubt that there's gonna be an issue because I didn't have any issues in Asia or Turkey, in Thailand or Turkey. Um, so like, that's one of the things that, um, that I recommend that I personally use. I also like to have an unlocked cell phone. You can either get a virtual SIM and leave your United States SIM in your phone. So like there's different, um, virtual SIM companies. So it's like typically like $15 for a gig or two. So it's kind of expensive, but it kind of will hold you over from when you, um, touch down in that country at the airport until you're able to get to a mall or to wherever you're going to get a, a cell phone sim if you're going to get a cell phone sim in that country so like when i was in um romania i um used the airport wi-fi to get to the airbnb and then use the airbnb wi-fi to catch an uber to the mall to get um a cell phone sim from there and then like i kind of like did the same thing when i was in london but um, sometimes you're without cell phone service and you gotta kind of navigate and find your way. Like, <laughs> you know, before GPS was a thing, which could be an adventure. So I like to use the eSIM. Last time I was in um, Cartagena, I used the eSIM the whole time. Probably spent like probably 20 or 30 bucks. I was there for seven days. Um, so like the the, I use it when I'm not in the hotel and stuff like that. So you can just Google international eSIMs and then um, you can kind of go from there. And then once you purchase it, they'll give you directions on how you actually activate it and stuff like that. It's not terribly uh, difficult. So like I would kind of like maybe set it up before you get to the airport and then like turn it on right before you're about to board the plane. Um, so I just went. My cell phone, I have an iPhone 12. It wasn't unlocked. I went to an unlocked place when I was in Dallas and I paid like 25 or 30 bucks to get it unlocked. And then like that has been golden. Um, I also have an international um, adapter that I bought from Amazon. Um, it was probably like $15. So if you're in Europe, you'll you'll switch the, 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 the plug-in prongs. If you're in Asia, you'll, you'll switch it up. Um, for those who are looking to travel to Colombia, they use the same outlets as America, so you don't need anything. But like for people that's trying to go to Brazil, uh, you you would need um, a special adapter. 
for your cell phone chargers, laptops, and other electronics. Um, so the, the checking account, the Capital One 360, having an unlocked phone, um, having an adapter is like, and then also was very important is just a portable charger. So it kind of just alleviates the stress. So you don't got necessarily look for um, a charger at the airport or you can use your plane, your, use your phone while you're on the plane. So when you're trying to call like an Uber or a taxi or anything like that, you don't have to uh, turn your phone off and wait for it. You know, it's just, it's, it's, it's always beneficial just to kind of have um, a portable charger. Mine's, I got mine's off of Amazon for 20 bucks. So it kind of, it gives you two full charges. So like, I didn't have any issue. I flew from London to, to Thailand. It was like 13 hours. We flew on Sunday night at 8.30 and then um, got to Thailand Monday at three. So I was able to, I was on my phone a significant amount of time and didn't have any didn't have any issues and stuff like that so like the portable charger is definitely a lifesaver um that i kind of recommend and then that's pretty much and then also i have like a um like a money belt that goes underneath your shirt like it, it goes like above like your belly button so if you want to put like your passport put cards to prevent like your your debit card credit cards and stuff like that um and cash just to prevent against pit blockers, I do have one of those as well to try to be safe out here. So yeah, so I got that. So like portable charger, I would say um, Capital One, at least checking account or some credit cards. Um, maybe um, like an international debit card that you can upload money to to kind of help out because banking gets a little um, funny. Um, and then having the unlocked phone with some people use Leica, but that's kind of expensive. I would just do the um, the eSIM for a day or two, and then swap out the um, swap out your SIM with a local SIM when you get to the country. So, like for example, in England, um, a SIM for a month costs fifteen pounds. In Romania, a SIM costs six dollars, and um turkey was more it was like 30 dollars um i believe in thailand it was like 20 for the month and then in um colombia i can't even remember it wasn't nothing significant it definitely was like no more than 20 bucks so it was really affordable so and then also if you can have a pen to swap out the SIM when you get back to the United States so you can use your regular service um, if you if you can remember to get one of those. But then that's pretty much, you know, all I, like the, the, that I must have besides, you know, passport and then make money and shit like that. But like having the, the portable charger, having the unlocked phone and like the, the, the Capital One checking account and stuff like that it's it's a it's a lifesaver just to make your life super easy um i don't feel comfortable walking around other countries with no cell phone service if i'm out and about at the mall or you know at a restaurant or something like that or wherever i i've uber to i kind of you know you need sometimes i don't want to be like yo i gotta get i gotta find wi-fi to get home i don't ever want to be in that situation so i can be wherever and then you know what i'm saying get home or at least have gps or have you know service to google like a taxi or something like that but i never had to um like i never was stranded never had like to call a taxi when i was in thailand i use um grab they it's a food delivery and also car service like uber or lyft when i was in romania they had they had a grab also and then lyft i mean um uber so i use that there london has uber um, Colombia and Medellin and Cartagena have Uber. <clears throat> so I usually call Ubers to go to the airport or an Uber or whatever to, if I'm going to like the clock tower to a restaurant or whatever to take me to the hotel. When I was in, um, 
Turkey, they have Uber, but taxi drivers come. So, like, their setup is a little bit unique. And then in Barcelona, I'm not sure if they have Uber. I just took a taxi to my airport, and then I took the airport shuttle back to the hotel. Um, so, and then also, I think that's it. I won't make this one too long. This will be just pretty much information. Like, subscribe, and be sure to watch some of my other videos, some of my stand-up material, and then me just talking about traveling.